Hi everybody. Um, I'll wait for a few more to jump on and I'm just going to find the video on my laptop so I can follow along with the any comments. So let's hope that this works. Alrighty. So I'll just wait along. Alrighty. So I've jumped on now, just wait for a few more people before we get started into it. I uh, hope everyone's had a good night so far. Oh, we've got a few more people. I can see Jules is watching. Alrighty. Hey Jules. Hey Tanya. <clears throat> Alrighty. So I may miss... Hi Bryson, hi fam. Um, I may miss some comments because of my setup. It's really difficult for me to like, you know, you don't want to be like watching my iPad the whole time. So, um, they are super cute, aren't they Jules? They are going to be little place cards. So at the moment we've got five little bunnies sitting in a row. Four little friends are off to the side and we're making another one tonight. Hi Gail. Alrighty. So I'm just going to keep an eye on my iPad for comments, so just give me a moment. Hi Kay! So I'm just trying to figure out where to nestle my iPad so I can at least read the comments. Ah, uh, I did not plan this one too well. Whatever. I'll hold it for the time being. Um... No worries, Samantha. It's always available on the page again, so don't don't stress about that one. Alrighty, guys. So um, I'll just sort of get into it a little bit more. Um, oh, Rita, that's so sad. I'm so so sorry for your loss. Um, watch it at your own pace. If you need a moment to have a smile on your face you can watch it back later and watch these cute little bunnies alrighty guys so uh, we've got about yeah we've got about 30 odd people hi Anissa so what we'll do is we'll just get started um, what we're working with today is balsa wood um, so for those who haven't who don't know anything about balsa wood um, it's basically made from a balsa tree which is quite a really, like, they're usually probably only, like, that round at a max um, in their trunks. And I did a little bit of research on this um, because I was always curious as to why balsa wood only comes in one, like, roughly that 10 centimeter thickness. Um, and this one here is actually a, a seven and a half centimeter thickness one, but that's irrelevant. Um, basically, balsa wood is the third lightest wood in the world um but it the other two you can't really cut with because they're just they would just flake more than a bolster wood 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 um so this is probably the strongest wood that is the lightest um anybody on here who might be into wood would know probably a bit more than me but i just Wanted to know the basics around it and as to why we can only really get them in thin sheets. Um, before we get into it um, furthermore is that you can actually buy balsa wood sheets that have been um, fused together and glued together like in a factory um, in the sizes of A4 and A3. Um, I did locate some and I purchased some but they didn't arrive in time because I located them super late. Um, these ones would be really good for cutting things like your cake choppers or larger sort of signs with names for your doors and your kids' walls and stuff. The only problem I have with them is that because they are fused and glued together on a seam, you will have some seams that will, um, or may be very visible. Um, and so if... You do run the risk of when cutting it might split or break at the seam so always keep in mind that if it's not a natural grain it's its weakest part 
Hi everybody else that I haven't said hi to and hi Marie, my mum is doing well, she's at work tonight. Righto, so um, I'm not sure if Jules and Paul are available to send you the links, but if they can post some links to the A3 and A4 balsa wood sheets that you can get, it's a supplier in Brisbane. Um, and I'm sure there are other suppliers around, but this is just what I was able to um, find. It's called, oh, um, I'll get the guys to send you um, where I got the sheets from Suzette. I just don't have it up in front of me at the moment. So um, the first thing we're going to start with is we're just going to cut some little bunnies. Uh, these are some cute little... Um, bunnies that stand up in a row they're a little bit rough at the moment but they have a little stand and they're going to be like little place cards um, that we can put a name on um, or whatnot so if you do have anything like a little get together with your family for Easter this would be a really cute way to dress up the table um, so first things first I'll show you how it's cut in the maker. I don't have my Explore model set up to show you how it's cut in here, but the other additional thing is that um, the maker, thanks Jules, the maker can cut up to 2.4 millimeters, um, but I'm currently using 2.5 millimeter balsa wood. Um, it still does allow it, um, however, it's you just kind of need to do an extra pass in a cut. The air like the Explore Airs won't cut this thickness. Um, well, not that I've tried, it hasn't. Um, I did try with 1.5 millimeter or 1.6 millimeter, and um, it did have a custom setting that I had to set up, but it did cut that one with the deep cut blade, which is this one. So this is the blade you would use if you were trying to cut 1.5 or 1.6 millimeter balsa wood on your Explore Air and what we're going to be cutting with is the knife blade on our makers so um, you can see the blade is like an exacto knife so what we'll do now is we'll pop that baby in now when you are cutting any kind of wood on the machine you're best off to use your purple mat. You can see I've probably got a lot of, I need to probably clean it. Um, now, I've done a lot of bunnies, you, little bunny up here that you can see. Um, I'm keeping this as my balsa wood one because it uh, balsa wood does sort of flake a little bit. So um, I'm definitely going to keep it as a separate one. And you have to tape down your materials. So what I'm actually doing is there's usually sort of two sides to your balsa wood. Now, the one with the sticker on it is usually the side that has the best finish, believe it or not. Um, and I'm not even sure why, but I've found that it is better if I cut it on top and not on the bottom. So I'm going to pop my balsa wood in the area that I need it to be. And I'm going to use masking tape, or you can use painter's tape, and tape it down. So... I'll just do that now. Sorry if I'm a little bit off screen. I'm just trying to get everything in the shot for you. So, and it doesn't matter if where you put your tape, if it is going to be where the cut lines go, because it, the tape actually holds together any of the little splintering of the bolster wood as you cut. So it's not an issue at all if you over tape. Oh. Come back here, little fold. And I'll just tape down the bottom one last bit. Please feel free to ask questions if you have any, but I'll go through the settings for the Explore models just after we do the Maker one first, okay? By the way, guys, I hope you know how much I must love you guys because I'm a massive footy freak and football's on right now as we speak. And I'm not, well, <laughs> I'm not watching it. So, righto. So now that we've got everything taped up and you can just see how well I've sort of taped it. hasn't, it's not over exaggerated. It's just a nice little taping um, just to sort of keep it on the board. 
The next step, and the maker will actually tell you this um, on your screen, so it will ask you to move these little wheels here across, and that is so that they don't might leave marks in your um, wood. <laughs> Go with sport. Um, I'm a I'm a, an NRL fan, so I'm a I'm a Broncos supporter, and they're currently playing at the moment. <laughs> All right, you guys can boo me later. Um, all righty, so we've moved all our wheels over to the corner here. And next stop we have to do is now load our mat. Just making sure that our knife blade is nestled nicely in the machine. So we'll just go through. All righty. So I already have this up on my design space. I've just, it was just a lot easier instead of showing you guys it. But I selected the option for balsa wood 2.4 millimeters, and that is my setting on the maker. Now, as I said, I'm actually cutting 2.5 millimeters, so we'll do an extra little pass um, to account for the fact that it's a little bit thicker, and also to account for the fact that my blade is probably a little bit dull after having cut 9, 10 other bunnies and some chipboard like I've not replaced this in all my chipboard projects so far so all my chipboard and balsa projects I'd say so we're just going to press go and the first thing your maker will do is it will come over into the corner and it will check the blade to make sure that I've actually put in the knife blade so we'll wait for that to go and I'll try and get closer, but I got you on a little tripod and I don't want to like disrupt. Come on, machine. So it actually lifts. I'll see if I can get the screen a little bit closer for you. Just give me a moment. On here I have two shapes. I have the shape of the bunny and the shape of the triangle. Now, um, you always have to be very mindful of the grain of the wood with balsa wood and the triangle doesn't always cut nice or neat. So, um, I do use my true control blade and trim that down a little bit. But in general, the what is that black cricket bench mat called and where is it from? Kristen, this is just a self-healing mat. You can get some of the self-healing mats from Spotlight. This one here is the one that has like the pretty pattern on the other side. And it was um, picked up for me by Jules when she went to Canada. So she purchased direct from um, Cricket on that one. But they do have a self-healing mat with their rotary kit. At spotlight. Hi Daria. Alrighty, so generally there's about seven passes for your 2.4 millimeter balsa wood setting. So um, I think it only takes like four minutes to cut the bunny. So this is um, actually a pretty quick project. So we'll just see how we go. Just fixing up my phone a little bit sorry guys all right so what is my machine doing it seems to have paused but that could be because my computer went into screensaver mode so just give me a moment no it's not cut on fast speed Suzette um, it is cut on a regular speed because 
um, the only fast speed options really are available for cardstock, vinyl and iron on. So I'm just going to make sure. I don't know what my machine is doing right now. Looks like I lost connection. This is great. Um, yeah, I know Bryson. <laughs> I actually am watching it, but not really watching it. So I'm just going to tell my machine to keep cutting. I don't know what it's doing. Yeah, Bryson. The magic of live television is the fact that it's there. <laughs> I can glance up from time to time and see the score. Uh, Natalie, you can buy balsa wood from pretty much uh, Spotlight, um, Bunnings, I think I saw it at Officeworks. Um, but you can also get sheets um, of balsa wood from like A4 and A3 from Balsa Central, which Jules shared the links above. So um, if you're just after the 10 centimeter or seven and a half centimeter sheets of Balsa wood, then that's not an issue at all because you can get them just at your local craft shops or your local um, spotlight or even um, Bunnings and your hardware stores. But um, if you want something bigger than 10 centimetres or 7.5 centimetres. Yeah, Riot. Look, and it's, I don't have Riot, so I always forget about that. Um, and, yeah. So, um, in terms of comparing balsa wood and chipboard, they're totally two different products. So, um, I don't have a preference. Balsa wood, um, you're restricted, obviously, with the sizes of what you can... Um, Cut because of the size of the wood. Chipboard, um, I obviously buy the Cricut chipboard um, from America or from Craft Online, and it comes in 11 by 11 inch sheets. However, um, there are some projects you probably wouldn't use the chipboard for because it, it actually is a paper product. So obviously, if it's something that could get wet, it will warp the chipboard. Um, whereas some other products you would be inclined to just use your chipboard if, sorry, your bolster if you could. Um, we're just waiting for this to go through its passes. It's currently at four or seven passes. Um, I won't be doing the extra pass on this one, um, but we, um, that's only because my machine stopped halfway through and lost connection. So we'll just get this one going. Sorry, it takes a little while to cut. Are there any other questions while we're at it? It's currently cutting past five of seven. Hi, Mama. What am I, my Jonath, or what am I making? <laughs> I'm my Jonathan this. Um, it's a little um, chipboard, uh, sorry, little balsa wood um, bunny place card. So we're just cutting out the two shapes. It's a bunny and a triangle. So a little something I just put together. Oh, sit down, bunny. Stay still. You're drunk. Um... <laughs> Alrighty, let's just see how we go. We're just cutting six or seven passes. And this will be the... It says it has one minute remaining, so fingers crossed. Um, to the person earlier who asked if you can do this on your Explore Air, you can, and I'll go through the settings with you um, shortly, maybe to fill in some some print and maybe to, while I'm painting and letting things dry and things like that. Um, 
Suzette, the design isn't on design space. I just picked a pretty bunny and then a triangle. There was I just kind of designed it myself by putting two shapes together, unfortunately. Um, well, fortunately, too. Um, all right, so that's telling me it's finished our cut. On my screen, you can't see it, but it says, without removing the mat, Confirm your cut went all the way through your material. If it looks good, unload the mat. If it doesn't, if you feel like you need to cut more, it says just press the C button again and it will go again. Um, so to answer your question, Sue, at this point here, it asks us if we need another pass. And if we did, we would just press this button here. And if we don't, we would just unload it. So it's really super simple. Hi, Kathy. Alrighty. Um, Emma, it's definitely a really good machine. I would definitely, um, if you're a graphic designer, um, I think that the Cricut machines can definitely, um, help you out and you could make some amazing stuff with it. Um, alrighty. So I'm just going to unload the mat now so we can get into little nitty gritty. So you can see here the cut, you can, oh, I'm knocking over my bunnies. You can see my cut there. Now it, doesn't necessarily for me I don't feel like it has to cut completely all the way through because I'm quite capable of using my true control knife um, I would rather stop it before it's fully like fully all the way through and I'll show you what I mean um, but it's mainly because um, I don't want it to get to the point where it starts splintering like it has here in the middle part but luckily for me that part is not actually going to be um, part of the bunny so um, I'm not sure. Have I missed any questions, guys? I feel like there's a couple of long, lengthy comments on there, and I have kind of a, don't have a chance to um expand them at the moment. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push my maker back because I don't actually need to cut with him again. Alrighty, we're just gonna keep. I'm just gonna pull off the tape, and I'll show you what I mean by. Um, how it's cut. Um, Paul, I will definitely run through those settings. Definitely. Um, I'm just going to do it after we get started with finishing off this bunny. Um, alrighty. So I'm just going to take him off the board and as usual, like or everything else, I always remove the mat away from the material so some of this stuff you could probably see will nearly come out on its own so the little triangle came out on its own and the bunny is sort of cut pretty much all the way through but I want to help it out a little bit so I don't want to risk getting any splinters so what I actually do is I grab my um, Cricut True Control Knife Hi Rhonda. Alrighty, so what I do is I, when I grab my true control knife, and I hope you guys can see, um, is I just kind of run the blade along the bl on the along the grain, so it pulls out different bits that have been cut cleanly through. That way, I'm not actually risking the um, parts being splintered, and if it hasn't been cut cleanly through, it won't just pull out like that. So can, I'm not sure. Can you see very well? I hope so. So I'm just sort of dragging my blade and you can see there that one wasn't fully ready to come off but we just enticed him away and this is just my way of making sure that I get a cleaner cut. So once again you can see here and it's usually um, sideways grain cuts so when a cut goes across the grain that's the one that may not come off as cleanly as you would like so this one here is actually sticking so I don't know if you can see he's still hanging there so I'm just going to turn him over and nick him from the back and I'm going to nick him in the grain so pretty much follow the way it all goes around so righty so I've got a few pieces of masking tape still left on him so I'm just going to peel them off just gently 
I'm missing some comments, it looks like it. Yep, okay. Alrighty, so I'm just peeling off the tape. And I'm just going to inspect the wood a little bit and just make sure I've had a really nice clean cut. Alrighty, so I'll just use the blade to sort of clean up those sharp edges, extra areas. So I'll just sort of clean up around his ears. Now, they say you can sand your bunnies and you definitely can. I don't, I'm not a builder. I'm not a you know, I don't have sand paper in my house. And what I do have is, if I can get it out of the packet, emery boards, which is just like little baby sandpaper. So what I just will do, and I don't use it harshly, I just do a little bit um, in the way that the wood grain is going. I don't go against the wood grain. I just kind of stroke, well it sounds wrong, but I just sort of work with the wood grain. And there's not a lot that I have to tidy up, but it's just more around these curved surfaces anyway. So we're just going to give him a small tidy. Hi Tracy. So we're just giving him a small tidy. Just want to get that bit there off. But I mean, he's cut pretty well. Um, with very little splintering. And trust me, I did do a couple of attempts to try and figure out what works best for me. But this setting with an extra cut is usually perfect for me. So there's bit of splinter there that I just wanted to get rid of. So there he is. I mean, he's not perfect, but you know, I'm going to have to paint him anyway. And the moment you put paint on something, he changes. So that's where we're at with the moment. So my first step here is, oh, I better tidy up my triangle. So I just give him a sand down in the way the grain is going. He is very cute, Kerry Lee. Um, honestly, I haven't worked with basswood yet, Sally. This is balsa wood. So I know that Cricut has brought out their own branded basswood but it's not available in Australia yet and really to be honest I'm not sure whether there'll be issues with getting it over in Australia because of it is a wood product and in terms of compliance and stuff it's really difficult sometimes so we just have this little thing here done up so all I'm going to do is glue him onto the back of the bunny so I'm going to use some of this Bostick's multi-bond industrial strength glue. And yeah, vinyl does actually stick. You know what the best thing, Suzette, to stick to wood is iron-on. So um, you could definitely iron-on instead of paint, but I really wanted a different finish on these ones. And I'm just sort of... Um, playing around with this so I want the bunny to stand that way so I'm actually going to stick this on his front leg and let that dry it dries pretty quickly but whilst it's drying I can talk to you guys about the settings of a few different things um, just want to make sure he is pretty right All right, stay there and dry, bunny. So, all right, so let's talk Cricut Explore, Explore Air 2. Explore. I'm making up words tonight, guys. All righty. So, um, the first thing that I'll tell you is cutting 
um, balsa wood, you would need the 1.6 or the 1.5 millimeter balsa wood. Um, it may also be known in some stores as 1 16th of an inch thickness. Um, so this is for cutting on the Explore Air and Explore Air 2. Basically anything except, well you can cut it on the Maker as well if you don't have the knife blade. You, as long as you're using the deep cut blade. So this is the blade you want to make sure you have. The housing is the black one and it ha it's actually a little bit shorter than a regular housing blade. So you can actually see that one is taller than the other. So, yeah, don't start on those Audi cups, Alicia. All right, so we're cutting on this with this blade in your Explore models or your Maker. It doesn't matter which one. If you're going to use this blade, you can cut up to 1.5 or 1.6 millimeter balsa wood. Now, sorry, I wrote down on my settings. You would want to make yourself a custom setting for this one. Um, on the Maker, you can definitely um, pick the 1.6 millimeter balsa wood setting, but on the Explore Air, there is no balsa wood setting. So what you would do is you would make a custom setting. Um, what you would pick from there is 220 cut pressure and a multi-cut of four times. So this is what I've done a bit of research and found, and it's also what I've tested on. So you would do your multi-cut of four, custom setting with 220 cut pressure, and that is for your 1.6 millimeter or 1.5 millimeter balsa wood. Um, a little clue that I have found, and I and, and correct me please, um, because I don't actually have an Explore Air 2. I only have an Explore 1 model. Now my little star wheels, so these little wheels here on the machine, my ones in my Explore 1 don't move. If your machine, if it doesn't allow them to move, then I would highly recommend mirroring your design and cutting it in reverse because if that wheel runs over the wood, it will leave an indent in it. So that's just a little tip or trick. Look, Rhonda, um, I'll be completely honest, I wouldn't work with this thickness of balsa wood for a cake topper. Um, you could definitely get away with just one layer of it, but I would recommend looking at getting the A4 or A3 sized sheets of fused balsa wood um, to try that for a cake topper. And when mine arrives, I'm definitely going to give it a little try just to see how it works. Having said that, I can't see unless you're going to fuse it yourself. I cannot see any way that you're going to be able to um, make a cake topper out of it. Um, can you please post the Cricut Explore Air 2 settings for the balsa wood that you were talking about in a word form? Yeah, I can definitely um, post them later on. I'm not going to be able to post them right now as we're speaking. So um, I'm just waiting for this like glue to sort of do its thing. Um, does anyone have any questions or anything in the meantime, just whilst I'm waiting for this glue to dry a little bit more? They do move on your air too? Great, because on my Explore 1, they definitely don't. So move your stars over. Alrighty. Thanks, Paul. Custom settings, 220 pressure, four cuts, deep cut blade. That's perfect. And just remember that that's for 1.6 to 1.5 to 1.6 millimeter balsa wood. Alrighty. So whilst this is sort of cutting or drying, sorry. Do we want to um, make an announcement, Paul? What do you think? Beck, the best thing that I use for cake toppers um, is this stuff here from, sorry, it's also done from Officeworks and glitter cardstock. Honestly, I probably, I don't really enjoy the working with 
um, well, I guess I make so many cake choppers that working with balsa wood and um, chipboard to make a cake chopper would be um, very time consuming and not profitable for me. But if you're just doing it for family and friends, um, you could definitely use either product. Alrighty, guys. So, um, we just thought we'd, um, while we're waiting for this to dry a little bit, is announce the winners of our pens competition from last week from our pens pens and more pens that Jules did alrighty so um so we have three sets of pens to give away and they're all gold packs of gold pens so they're you, you're gonna get your gold on for a little while um we had some really amazing entries um and you guys are making it harder and harder every week for us to be able to pick a winner um because you guys keep showing us some really good potential projects and some really amazing projects you've already made as well um so we've tried to sort of have a little bit more of a think about what we've got and our winners if anyone wants to give us a drum roll i'm not doing it for myself <laughs> so i'll wait till i see some drums Yep, there's some great drums happening here. Oh, great. Thanks, Beck. <laughs> well, come on, Jules. We got some drum rolls. All right. So, oh, Bryson, thank you. The winners are Chantel Ingram, Christine Valentine, and Karen Chadwick. Congratulations, guys. This is amazing. Um, I hope you enjoy your pens. Please send me a private message with your address so that I can get them out to you as soon as possible. Um, for everybody that missed out on that comp, we'll have some more news for you later. In the meantime, I am going to get back to painting my little bunny just so that we can get him a little bit further on. So I'll just talk to you about what products I'm using here and where I got them from. So I'm actually going to paint him in this little birdie chalk paint. <laughs> Rightio. Yeah, everyone did amazing, guys. We love seeing everything that you create. And we'll do a little post, maybe Paul or Jules will post and tag them later on to remind them in case they're not online tonight. So this is the paint I'm actually going to paint the bunny with. Um, I actually purchased it from a Choice Discount Store. Um, there is like a website for Little Birdie, um, but they're an American website. But I got a whole heap from them. So like I've got heaps of different colors from Choice. I just picked up every single one that I could find. Um, so... What we're going to do is we're going to paint the bunny in a colour because I've actually going to have got 10 bunnies all up and I'm getting two of each. So let's just, I'm really basic with this and I'm going to finish it later. I'm not going to do it all tonight. I'm just going to show you what I got going on. Um, so we're just painting. I had my mum painting actually last night for me. And you, yeah, you can also get... Um, chalk paint from other places like spotlight i did use uh, one spotlight color um for the gray greeny minty colors it's called vintage um but i don't even know what brand it's called because i don't have it in front of me um i did use this stuff here from spotlight but i couldn't actually find it online at the time and it might be because it's on clearance so um anything it doesn't have to be chalk paint but it can just be chalky finish which is just as good as one another so this stuff actually dries incredibly fast and you can see that my um glue is still a bit soft but like he's definitely on his way to being dry completely have I missed any comments from anyone yeah look 
Aldi has some great buys from time to time. Um, I don't always get to see all their specials. Um, Bunnings do chalk paint, but in larger amounts. I'm sure, like, I don't know, 100% Beck, but could you get, like, little pots, like, tester pots if, of their chalk paint from Bunnings? Um, I think there was a comment asking about balsa wood. Yeah, Brooke, this, um, machine can do amazing things, balsa wood included. So I'll just get a bit more paint here. Hi, Chantel. I feel like this paint matches my fingernails. See? No, I swear I didn't pick it on purpose. Yes, Chantel, you can see the footy. <laughs> um, there's no hiding the fact that I'm still watching the football at the same time as this tutorial. I'm just not yelling at the screen, but I should be. So we're just going to let this paint dry. Um, but what I have done and will continue to do for this one here is that um, I'll get him painted front and back. And this is only one coat. Like I feel like one coat was enough for him. Um, and then I just got... Some little pom-poms from um, Spotlight. I think Jules shared the link for them before. They're little craft, um, like kids craft section pom-poms. And they come in a little packet. You can get some multi-packs of different sizes or you can get like a small pack. It's a little packet of white pom-poms. And I just hot glued him to his bum just so that he can look a little bit more like a bunny, a fluffy bunny. Um... Vanessa, I'm not really sure. I haven't I haven't tried embossing balsa wood yet. Um, uh, Diane, when I lost my connection, I just reconnected it on my computer and pressed start again without unloading my mat. Um, Nikki, there are some links above with um, where to buy balsa wood online from Balsa Central, which has fused a3 and a4 size um, bolster wood but you can also just buy your regular um, seven and a half centimeter or ten centimeter bolster wood um, pieces from spotlight or office works or bunnings um, belinda i definitely did use the knife blade to cut this bolster wood um, but as i said before i did share the settings to cut it using the deep cut blade um, on your Explore Air 2 or even your Maker if you don't have the knife blade. Um, so it definitely can be cut. You just can't cut the 2.5mm um, balsa wood with that blade. It's a little bit thick for that one. Um, what else have I missed? Uh, oh, that's so nice. Where did you get your mugs in the background? Which mugs? I'm assuming you're talking about those mugs there and they were from Aldi when they were on special. Um, righto, so whilst this is drying, I think we'll talk about, I mean, this is a pretty quick tutorial, so I think we'll talk about, um, a couple of things we've got going on. So, I don't know if you guys want me to look at you, or do you want to see my, my face? Give me a second, I'll just, so you don't see my messy room, I'm going to spin the camera. Ah, you can see my room. Hey, it's me. Hi, Tamara. Alrighty. So we've got a couple of things exciting going on um, this week. First of all, we wanted to announce another um, Dreaming Tree competition. So, aha, uh -huh, thanks, Bryson. <laughs> you can still watch the paint dry if you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a Dreaming Tree competition. So like we did with our last one, we have two vouchers to give away to Dreaming Tree. Um, if you don't know what Dreaming Tree is, um, they're an amazing website with a whole bunch of SVG files. They do a lot of uh, 3D files as well. So a lot of um, 3D flowers. My husband's clapping. I don't know what happened, but something did. Um, 3D flowers, um, luminaries, a whole bunch of stuff. 
Thanks, Shaz. Um, so what we are going to do is ask everybody if they can pretty please, um, once the post is up on the page, which we'll do after the live, um, can you guys go on to the website? The website will be on the post so you know which one to go to and send us, yep, Paul's got it, dreamingtree3dsvg.com. Um, send us a screenshot or post a screenshot onto the post um, of what project you want to make the most out of Dreaming Tree. So if you won this gift voucher um, to purchase any file from Dreaming Tree, what did you want to make? What do you aspire to make out of that page? Um, Obviously, we don't want to see everyone sharing the same photo. So, like, um, by all means, pick the most difficult or the most easy one suited to your skill set. And if there's a little reason why you want to make that, so say you wanted to make it because that particular flower was your mother's favorite flower and you want to make it for Mother's Day, which is coming up soon, um, or if you have a wedding coming up and you wanted to make a little gift for them. So... Give us a little story and tell us why you want to make that. Don't just shove a photo in our faces. And um, uh, maybe they did, possibly, <laughs> Karen. Um, yeah, so what we'll do is we're going to give away two, I think they're $10 vouchers to Dreaming Tree. Um, and we'll have them announced next week in Jules's tutorial. And speaking of Jules's tutorial, um, we are going to have her showing us some last minute Easter projects. So if you haven't made a gift yet or you haven't got yourself prepared with what your kids are, are going to do at Easter time, then tune into Jules's tutorial next week and she's going to go through some cute little easy and simple Easter projects um, that everyone can play along with. I'm not even sure what she's got planned to be honest, but it is some Easter projects. What are you trying to say? What are you replying to, Paul? First time for everything for what? For the Broncos scoring? <laughs> We've leveled up. Alrighty, and lastly, <laughs> Paul, you're a pain. Go sports, Paul, go and play sports. Um, and lastly, what we're going to do is, um, I forgot where I was at. You guys just stuff me up every time. Paul, you're a bad influence. Are we in front now, Karen? <laughs> I think he's watching it on Foxtel and I'm watching it on um, Channel 9. So we're a little bit behind each other. Um, righto. So um, stay tuned next week, particularly um, maybe Wednesday. Um, you might see Paul, Jules and I popping in from time to time on the page with some exciting stuff. Um, yeah, Wednesday. So, um, just, just loiter on the page a little bit on Wednesday and just see what you find. You might see some pretty faces. Um, <laughs> all right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. You guys don't need to see the bunny drying. You know how he turns up. Keep an eye out for these guys. Maybe on Wednesday. I don't know. Have a... <laughs> Have a wonderful night, guys. I'm going to go and watch the game. And I will... Well, it's nearly half time. And I will talk to you guys later. And we'll post the link for the competition as well. Alright, guys. Have a wonderful night. Bye.